Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Behind the Veil, a show that provides insight into the world of weddings. I'm your host, Keith Willard. Welcome back to the show. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the big five, which is photography. It is more important than you can ever imagine to make sure that your memories are captured in a way that you really love. Basic weddings are built on kind of five pillars, your venue, your catering, your decor, your entertainment, and your photography. How do you know you have the right photographer? And what kind of questions should you be asking before you hire that photographer? Well, we've got an amazing person. Her name is Lynn Resnick. We're going to introduce her shortly. But before I get to her, let me introduce Marcy Gutenberg with An Affair to Remember by Marcy. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Kate. So photography is kind of that big thing yes, that, it is. you know, I, it's, it's one of the few areas that I tell my clients that they can skimp on. You know, you can get away with a lot at a wedding. You know, if you don't have them most amazing cake, nobody's going to care. If you don't have like the holy crap over the top linen, nobody's going to care. But if you have shitty pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and they last forever. <laughs> and, they la and they last forever. And I think that, that at the end of the day, you know, uh, most people don't even really understand how important photography is nor do they know what kind of questions they should be asking. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know? I mean, definitely go in prepared. Right? So uh, let me introduce Lynn Resnick. Hi, Lynn. Welcome Hi. to the show. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Keith. Hi, Marcy. So Lynn is the owner of Lynn Resnick Photography. And she, by the way, surprise, you were just named one of the top photographers by Boston Magazine. Wow. Yes, top photographers to follow, which is a very specific thing. But yes. Oh, I, well, and I love the fact that you used to be a high school teacher and now yeah. you're a photographer. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I taught for 10 years and got into photography for my own wedding. And uh, my wedding photographer became my mentor, which was super cool. And then I launched my business on the side. It works out well in New England because summer's off for teaching. Right. Busy season up here for weddings. So I could kind of balance both for a while. Well, Talk I, about I mean, a picture being a thousand words. As a, right? You were... What did you teach when you were in school? Uh, yeah. U.S. history. I was okay. Like something totally different, not even in the arts. Well, yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, the phot photography probably wasn't even invented for part of those. So, you know. <laughs> exactly. <saying. laughs> right. <laughs> but U.S. history. So you went from teaching U.S. history to photography. And by the way, we originally had you scheduled for the show to do a business segment about how to become more efficient with your business. And photography was such a big thing, and we got so many questions on it that we actually changed your appearance to be about uh, photography because you are such an amazing photographer. So thank you for you know being being flexible on that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to to dive into all the things for sure. I mean, the educator in me will loves to be able to help and support and share knowledge. And so if you know, I think the, the questions you guys were talking about at the start are all great ones to start, you know, to start thinking about and like what a couples need to ask. Um, I think yeah. as vendors, we always like, there's so many things we just assume because we right. know them. And so being able to help couples kind of figure out how to navigate and how to choose like someone they're going to be really happy with uh, is important. So, well, uh, okay. So let's, let's start there. You're, you're a brand new couple, yeah. right? You've never planned a wedding before. You're just starting to look at photographers. What do you think are kind of the like the big things that a couple should kind of pay attention to when starting to pick their photographer? Yeah, so there are a few things. One is style. I think you want to make sure that stylistically you like what you're seeing in the images uh, that you're either, I know so many people are looking on Instagram now, but click through to websites and look at a portfolio of images on the website as well. Um, and the other thing is is to look at um, like personality too. Right. How is that shining through on a website? And then especially on a call, before you even get to the questions that you should be asking, if you like the look of the images, the next right. thing is like, do you click with this photographer as a human being? Because photographers are not only creating the documentation of your day that you're going to see forever. Hi, Brooke. Um, <laughs> but you're also, right, 
they're going to be the ones with you for like so much of that day, literally by your side and getting ready and um, right. intimate moments when you're like changing into a dress or a tux, like all of those pieces, they're going to be with you as you're hanging out before the ceremony, right after it. Um, so we're there for so much of the day. You want to really click personality wise with that photographer. I think that's huge and not necessarily thought about as right. couples are thinking about like, looking up questions to ask and like, how long have you been in business or are you full time? Like that doesn't necessarily crazy. matter. Like if I'm full time or not, I was right. actually part time for a long time in my business. And right. that has no impact on the photos I'm creating for you. Well, um, and I'm, I'm glad you brought up the Instagram paint piece because I, there is a particular photographer that photography company, I shouldn't say photographer because it's a, it's a, a, a larger company that has the most amazing Instagram account that I've ever seen. Every photo is perfect. Now, does that mean that I'm a hundred percent happy with all of the photos that they've given me for the weddings? No, because you know, because they've picked the best of the best to produce. So I think it's, it's a, it, it's one of those big mistakes that people like look on Instagram and they're like, well, their Instagram is amazing. They must be amazing. That's not always true. Exactly right. I mean, Instagram is a highlight reel. I think everyone calls it that. And yet yeah. when couples go to look for photographers or videographers or things like that, like you forget that that's what's really going on. Um, you know, so much of a wedding happens after dark, inside, things like that. And so many natural light photographers, including myself in a lot of ways, use Instagram. I'm looking to like curate my feed to feel like a, you know, feel like a curated gallery. I'm going to show only certain images. So right. you'll see getting ready, but you hardly ever see a reception photo because it just doesn't match with like the aesthetic of my feed. That doesn't mean that I don't light those and take them and shoot the reception and do all those things. Right. You're just not going to find that on Instagram. So you really want to ask for a full gallery when you're talking to a photographer, see how they shoot an entire day. How do they capture it from start to finish in those tough lighting situations, not just on those sunny days outside. So you mentioned you're a natural light photographer. I, as somebody that's been in this business for a, a really long time, don't say anything, Brooke. <laughs> I, you know, I actually don't think I've ever heard anybody specifically say natural light photographer. Tell me more about that. What does that mean? Yeah. So lots of people will, I think, describe themselves as that. And it just means that they really enjoy shooting in daylight, in sunshine, like not necessarily using a lot of um, like off camera flash or things like that. And so you, they kind of prefer that. The trapping of that um, is that it can also be a way for newer photographers to kind of talk about what they prefer and maybe what they're most confident in. Right. What you don't realize is that they're not using flash well at night or in a reception or you know off camera flash, which on camera is effective as well, but there are some instances, like for example, we have a lot of um, historic estates or barn venues up in New England where I am. Right, 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 right. You don't want to be bouncing light off of uh, those dark orange walls because you're everyone's just going to look orange, right? <laughs> Yummy. So you need that off camera that's going directly on them with clean <laughs> light. So there's a like technical <laughs> things, but like they make a difference. And so that's why it's just so important to see the images because right. someone who's purely natural light might actually have a hard time doing your reception well, right? So, and doing it justice. But there are plenty of us who will mix kind of both, right? I love sunlight and shooting with, with in great light, but I can also light a reception space. Well, and I think that's important because, you know, I, I cannot even tell you how many times a photographer has come up to me and said, can we turn on the overhead lights right in the middle of dinner so I can get a good picture of the bride and groom? And I'm like, no, no, you, you cannot do <laughs> no, that. No, cannot, no. No, because, you know, it's the <laughs> guest a experience. Vibe. It's a whole mood, right? Right, right. exactly. You're killing it. <laughs> You're going to kill it. We're taking, all, we took all this time to get people into kind of a place and in that moment of like, oh, what a great night, blah, blah, blah. And then the house lights come on and it feels like you're at 4 a.m. at, you know, Club Gaga in New York City. And you're like, oh, I got to go home. I got to go. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, I, I always feel bad for couples when their photographer does that. And so when you say natural light, does that mean that you're probably going to be better at that kind of moment to, to be able to use what kind of lighting you actually have? 
Um, so natural light's really just like referring to daylight um, and shooting outdoors as much as possible. Um, but so people who do that, and, and that's like, again, what you're going to see on a lot of feeds, especially if we're talking about like the different aesthetics, right? Like light and airy or dark and moody, things like that. Light and airy photographers right. um, tend to, ha you know, go for that natural light look, especially like that's what you're going to show those daylight outdoor images as much as possible. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not doing those other things. Well, it's just a question you should be asking. You should be asking to see a full gallery so you can see how they capture a whole day, how they're dealing with those things. So when you say full gallery, because uh, yeah. if, if somebody called me and said, Hey, I'd like to get a pic, uh, uh, I'd like to get some photos of how you plan your event for a full day. I'm not going to give him the worst. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not going to give him the one that I was like, you know, sweating through all of my clothes and I looked like a horrific mess the entire time. I'm going to send him like the, the best of the best. So how is that different than an Instagram account? Yeah, what's different? So for my couples, when I say full gallery as a photographer, I'm there usually eight to 10 hours for my right. couples from getting ready and styling details through at least the first chunk of a reception, the formalities, the dance floor vibe, right? Yep. Um, even if I'm not there till the end, you're getting like oh, through those dancing photos. And so when I deliver, it's usually, and I would say for most photographers, it's somewhere between 75 to 100 images per hour of coverage. Okay. So they're getting, let's say, 800 images for an eight hour day. Right. I'm going to send a link to a gallery that has all of those images that I delivered to one of my previous couples in it. So they're all edited. They're all final images, um, but they tell the full story of the day. I'm not putting together like a highlight reel that's just 50 hand selected ones. It's here is this wedding that happened at this venue. This is everything that my previous couple got. And so they really have a chance to see all of the images that the couple is getting. And is that normal? Is that normal to do uh, eight to 10 hours? Because I have, you know, one of the cost cutting measures that my clients talk about is can we have them there just for five hours or can we have them just there for six hours in order to reduce the overall cost? And what would be your answer to that? Is that a viable option? So, it is. I know that's. I, mean, a, I, I know yes. that kind of puts you in a, I know <laughs> that puts you in a, in a in a tough place. But no, you know, no, I, but... I, I I've said that it doesn't capture everything. You're gonna right. miss something because right. we're being focused on those six hours. So you're gonna miss some of these amazing photos that you may want to kick yourself later for. But exactly. but I may get better pictures because you're hiring a better qualified can you know person to take the right. pictures. Right. Hundred percent. So you know. Again, I'm going to go back to to my that that question. You know, yeah. does that make sense? It depends on your day, and right. you know, and and that's just like the sounds like a way to weasel out of it. But it, a lot no. of it does depend on your day, um, <laughs> and it depends on kind of what parts of the day you value. Right. Because you're right. Like if it's only six hours or five hours, you're going to miss some aspect of the day in coverage. Uh, as opposed to trying to squeeze everything in. Like that would be an absolute no, I would not do that. Cause you don't want to feel like you're running around your reception, like station to station. Like we're going to do cake cutting, then we're going to do this dance, then we're going to do this dance and we're going to squeeze it all in within like, you know, the 45 minutes that you're here because we only wanted to have you for six hours. Right. Um, I would rather, you know, if you really want all those things covered, I'm going to tell a couple that they need to invest in the time that it takes to do that well and to let your reception flow naturally. So- Marcy, I, okay. oh, sorry. Yes. Um, so, so if you have a person that you're looking at, like, let's say you're a couple and you're looking for a person to take pictures for you, how do you know that the pictures that you're looking at are actually the person who says that they're their pictures? Case in point, I re I work for a company that we actually had a photographer, a beautiful photography photo album in our lobby, in our, in our, uh, reception area. And it was, it was taken. It was taken by another photographer who was then trying to pass them off as their pictures. This uh, was a long time ago. Yeah. Things obviously, you know, have changed. But how does somebody go in with the idea of I'm looking at the pictures that I'm supposed to be looking at that have sneaky. been taken by this person? I got yeah. you. Ooh, that's tricky. Um, it right? is a little tricky. I, Sorry I to put you on the spot that, on that no, one. No, I hate that yeah, that happens. But, I've, I mean, I've heard 
you know, on the photography side, some photographers being like that they've been made aware that a photo was taken or, or used or something like that. And we're dealing with that on the, the photographer side of trying right. to like assert copyright or get people to take them down and things like that. But um, right. in terms of a couple, I would say one, it's generally rare from what I understand. So hopefully you're not running across that because it is a rare thing. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, again, I think why it's important to look closely at a website and make sure that you're seeing more than just a homepage with a few photos on it. Like, do they have a blog where they're sharing educational information? They're sharing like lots of photos from previous weddings or previous work. Are they, do they have galleries that they're all linking to? Um, the more that you can kind of see in, in from a built out web page that has several layers and has been around a while, the more sure I think you can tend to be that they're a legitimate business. And then inquiring and asking for that link. Um, most photographers now use online galleries to mm -hmm. host their photo, you know, their finished photos for their clients. And so those are going to be, you know, branded in some way. It should have like their logo at the top, you know, passwords. I mean, so those are kinds of some of the things you can look at for viability. Yeah. Right. And, and those then check for reviews too. I mean, you know, those review websites are all, you know, wedding wire in the knot most photographers are going to have a, at least a free account there where they're collecting reviews right. and those should be really telling. Are you, are they giving a good experience Were people happy with their photos? Great advice. I oh. think that, uh, you know, this was well before the uh, advent of having a gallery online. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you a question. All right. So I may put you on the, the spot a little bit on this one. <laughs> Uh, a little bit. And again, be completely honest, because obviously, you know, uh, the people that are watching this are, are want to get your your real kind of opinion on this. You know, before we had the kind of the online galleries, the photo album was the all important king of kings. You got to have a photo album to cap to have everything in one place. Yeah. But now people can use all these online forums to create their own book. What do you say about, do you feel like that is a positive addition when somebody says, Oh, I'm going to, I'll give you i I'll give you your own book. You know, it, it, I'll throw that in if you, if you sign today, so to speak. So if people like include, if a photographer includes an album in a, collection yeah. or something like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I actually do have my, a couple of my top collections, two out of my three collections include an album. Right. And I do think that they're still so important. Um, you know, as a, as technology continues to change, just thinking about since the time I've been in the business, yeah. if you look at what happened from when I launched in 2012, I started delivering photos on um, DVDs. Which I don't even know anyone who has a DVD player uh, like that you can no. play them on now. Oh my God. Then All I think changed. is porn, Chicky Bow Wow. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> then um, we went to uh, USB drives. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And now, I remember like, it. The USB drive is like different. There's like three versions of a USB drive. They're getting like smaller and different, right? Um, right. Like the USB ports are changing. Um, we're doing like now it's just cloud delivery uh, yeah. and you're downloading and things like that. But if you really want to ensure that you can access those photos 10 years down the road, because that's about how long I've been in business and it's changed right. three times since then, um, printing your photos is the best way to make sure that you get to actually enjoy them and preserve them and keep those memories. And so um, I love an album for that reason and prints for that reason. That's interesting that you said that because I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought about that kind of perspective unless you had just said it. Because to be honest, what I usually say is, well, you can print them anytime. I mean, they're available mm -hmm. online as, as long as, you know, a, a certain amount of time. Um, what, yeah. how long do you keep your photos online for your couples? Like, you know, your cup, if you have 800 photos online, that is quite a bit of terabytes, not even mm -hmm. terabytes, a, a, a quite a bit of megabytes at that, mm -hmm. that point. And if, obviously you pay for that kind of memory month after month, year after year. How long do you keep? couple's photos so for me it's in my contract that it's a year that oh, one year a year one year yeah. it's normally yeah. more i think i'm probably at three right now right 
but it's only guaranteed in their contract for a year. And that just protects me if there's ever an issue, you know, and eventually they will have to come down because you're otherwise it just becomes financially like untenable to have to pay for that much storage uh, on the web, you know, year right. after year. Um, and of course they'll get like a notification before, you know, it's coming down to give them a month warning and then a week warning and those kinds of things. But yeah, so only a year um, to keep them up as a guarantee. And I feel that's fair. I feel a like year. Plenty of time, year. hopefully. I was right? about to say, like, yeah. Download I mean, this right away. Don't wait. <laughs> especially since most of us have Dropbox or one of those cl yes, cloud-based, right. you know, right. storage areas. I mean, that's that's an easy thing to say. You know what? Let me just download these. Yeah. Um, what about? And here's a, a, a random question, and it's actually come up in in a couple of contracts. Who actually owns the rights oh, to yes. the photos? Yes. The proofs and the photos. Let me yes. come yeah. back to that. Just one more thing to add about the albums that I think yeah. is important before we get off that subject would be Easy you can print, you can technically print anywhere, but there are a few bonuses for working with your photographer to print an album or to get your prints. Um, and one of those is that the photographer's computer is calibrated to the professional lab that they use. Okay. So they're going to print more true to color that you see in the final images potentially than if you were to go somewhere else and print them. And the other thing with getting an album is that a lot of photographers will do the design work for you. So I do all the design work for my couples and I send them a proof, you know, electronically and they can just kind of approve or ask for edits. But everyone who thinks that they're going to save time and money by doing their album on their own, Five years later, I've had couples come back and be like, yeah, life happened and we never actually designed this or printed it because it takes so long and you have to cull from like 800 images down to 80 or 65 or 50. So like, how do we even start on that? Yeah. Um, so by you, you know, your photographer taking care of that first draft of it for you and actually getting it into your hands, getting it ordered, like you're much more likely to end up with it within a year of your wedding. Than well, actually, <laughs> one of our local photographers, Jeff, who is an awesome local photographer, by the way, he was he just said pictures in an album are forever. Digital files are not. Most people lose their digital files after five to 10 exactly. years. Yep. I get that. I totally get totally that. Totally get it. You know, if you move it over to your Dropbox, at some point you you're like, wait, what did I do with this folder? What did I do with that file? I mean, I'm doing it right now with my own wedding, but I'm like, <laughs> wait, where did I put the where did I yeah. put that file? And and I so I totally get it. I totally get the understanding yeah. to to have something printed because it's solid. It's there. It's you know, God forbid anything like you know fire or something happens, but it's forever, basically. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, back to the copyright. Yeah, off of my little soapbox there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for, so for copyright, the, the artist who created the images, the photographer who creates them maintains the copyright to them. Um, for all intents and purposes, though, when a couple purchases with you and they have, you know, a collection that includes the, the images, right? right. Like the digital download of the images a personal usage is usually included with that, which just means that you can share them, you can print them wherever you want, you can put them online, um, you know, you can share them with friends and family, you can do all those things. Um, where this kind of may come into play is if you ever, you know, have someone uh, famous or for some reason, you know, People Magazine wants to pay to put you on the cover, you have to send them back to the photographer for that kind of a commercial use of those photos because the liability, the usage is a personal one. Right. For the water. Well, yeah. I've actually, I, sorry, one more thing. I've actually had uh, couples that, because part of the most photographers contracts state that they can use the couple's photos in marketing campaigns yes. without their prior authorization. And I feel like that's a really important piece because some people don't want their their face to be show up on some random ad in a magazine you need to have a little control so typically what i do is i do adjust the the contract a little bit to say that no faces will you can use photos of the decor of people but no specific faces for your marketing campaign not everybody's as sensitive as i am about that or other people but i think that's kind of an important thing to to remember that you know, that's built into most photographers' contracts that it they sure can is. use it yeah. whenever you want. It is, it is. And it is a tricky thing. Like I totally understand couples maybe wanting a heads up or privacy and adding that in in some ways. 
And it's great that you're still allowing for like, or thinking about decor and things like that, because you can kind of walk a line um, where a lot of photographers may charge a, like a privacy fee, right? Right. Because we, our work, literally, if we can't show our work, um, like our work are the images we create, right? And right. telling that story. So if we can't use them, we don't have real life displays of other things to like, you're not coming into my shop as a florist and like looking at a floral display I can put together for you. I can either show you the images from this wedding or not. Right. Um, so that's why you might see a privacy fee involved if you say like no images can be used because it is kind of the way that we are able to create more business and keep our businesses going by showing our latest work. Um, but having those at least decor shots or detail shots, you know, close-ups of hands, the backs of head, like things like that can help right. kind of like walk that line without getting into a privacy fee, depending on the photographer. Well, and the only reason I bring it up is because, you know, now that same-sex weddings are are obviously legal and it's become obviously much more widely accepted just in general. But when same-sex marriages first came out, everybody jumped on that bandwagon. Everybody said, oh, we do LGBTQ plus uh, events. But not everybody in those shots are out to their friends and family. There may be people that don't know they're in a in a gay relationship or even gotten married to yeah. somebody in the same sex. And then all of a sudden, a big banner comes up with their faces. And I've, I've heard stories where they're just like mortified because they didn't realize that it was in the contract that they could do that. And there was no obviously legal repercussions whatsoever because they signed the contract. They didn't read it. They didn't pay attention to it. So I think that one of the things I want to get across is that you need to read your contract. You do. And that's, I honestly, one of the best, I think side effects of COVID has been that people are reading a lot more carefully now because yeah. all those cancellation and um, change of date and all those kinds of things are, um, we're, were invoked for the first time in a lot of cases. Right. And uh, people are all, all of a sudden kind of realizing, oh, I, this does actually matter what's written in here. So yeah, absolutely read. And that would be, I can't imagine, you know. Can you imagine? I mean, like, like outing it, someone before exactly. they were ready, like in that kind of a massive public way. So yeah, that would be horrible. And definitely read your contract and let's make, figure out how to make sure that those well, kinds of moments don't happen. <laughs> well, and the thing is, is that, you know, how people feel uh, with their friends and family and how they come across with their friends and family is very different than if they were, you know, out in the public forum. I mean, I have a client that is a big wig political person here in South Florida, and I'm having to be very careful about who I talk to and in what capacity to, and when it comes to their wedding, because as comfortable as he is behind the scenes, it doesn't mean he's always uh, going to be comfortable politically on in, in general for the general public. So I feel like as a pro, it's my responsibility to be over careful. And you would think that photographers would do the same thing that they would be over careful, but that's just not the case. I mean, it is better to have it in print and that everybody's on the same page than to kind of leave it up to a question. So what are, okay. And I'm going to go back to, I'm a, I'm a new client. I, you know, I'm a new couple. I'm just out looking for my photographer. You know, you, you when people say that they're journalistic, when they're, you know, put, they have multiple terms about like the kind of photographer they are. Yeah. Can you tell me a couple of those terms and, and, and some basic, like what that means? Sure. Yeah, there are, I know there are so many and honestly, I think yeah. even photographers can mean different things from them or there are different like degrees. So asking follow-up questions for people to explain those terms for what they mean to them, like as each photographer is important as well. But um, for one, I, you mentioned like photojournalistic, right? Photojournalism. Um, right. So like that is really this idea of heavily candid and not coming into a scene. So if you think about it's relating to like a journal on assignment, documenting what's around them. They're not going to change a the scene. They're not going to intervene and tell you to like go stand in a different place or, um, you know, clean up a messy room or anything like that. They're just right. going to try and really like fade into the background and be unobtrusive and document moments as they happen and be fully, fully candid. Right. I would say a lot of people will talk about that and they're not a hundred percent photojournalistic because exactly. you can't be totally. 
I am. You just I nailed hired it. Out. One it yeah. they, they, we're not. <laughs> right. And I don't know that you actually want someone to be like that, right? Do you right. want to like have the cords and the bras and the like red solo cups and you're getting ready like shots? <laughs> Or do you want like a clean bed and like all the phone cords moved and we're going to shoot this next to a window and not in the darkest part of the room because that's where the beautiful light is. Like right. all of those are interventions that a photographer might make that are no longer truly photojournalistic in True. capturing a scene. Right. That, you know, it's more documentary style. They're making some art direction calls. We're going to move you here. Art we're going to clean this calls. space, right? Like nice, we're going to art nice direct this like a little bit. Um, but... Yeah, and not being, and then for portraits, it's the same thing. Do you want someone who's just going to like not say a word, not help you pose or give you direction or prompts or anything like that? And just kind of, it's all going to be 100% candid all day. Maybe you don't even have a formal portrait time during your day. Or right. are you looking for someone who can help you pose and, and give you some prompts and direct you a little bit into maybe like the, the best light and to feel natural in front of the camera and get more of those formal portraits? Um, so there is like naturally posed portraiture and then there's more formal portraiture. I think about the two, like a difference in there as naturally posed is going to be more about interacting. It's usually with the couple and elements of bridal party photos or wedding party photos where yeah. you might have them like walking and talking and interacting together. You're and they're like, now look movement. at each other. Now everybody laugh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Like, we're gonna we're gonna try and focus on each other as opposed to being like really stiff and facing the camera. And then during family portraits, a lot of times it's that formal portraiture where we're gonna help you get in your nice little lines, and we're gonna make sure everyone's straight and there are no straps showing, and everyone's necklaces are perfect. And we're gonna take those photos that you know are gonna end up on your wall with everyone smiling together. I tell people that you have to really pay attention to a photographer's personality when it comes to their photos. Like I have, I have a phot photographer that I love and, but she's moody. I know her photos are moody. They've got kind of this, like they're typically black and white, exactly. you know, they got a moodiness to it. And, mm -hmm. I, and sometimes it's a sexy moodiness, but there is a definite kind of personality that comes with that photo. And while others are bright and vibrant and super happy and, you know, running along the beach and I'm what a beautiful day. Um, and I think that's yeah. important to kind of match your personality with the kind of photos that you want and don't do your opposite. I, it, I, sometimes I get so crazy with my clients because they're like, well, I really like this, but you know, I really, I really think maybe I should be doing the bright and happy one, even though I'm not a bright and happy person. Mm -hmm. because they're assuming that this is what their family or friends want. And I'm like, don't base your decision on your friends and family. They, <laughs> do you may you. get, you do you, you may get rid of them next in next month, next exactly. week, next year. You know, you're not going to want their input on this. Uh, 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 what do you think about that? I mean, yeah. do you feel like- Oh my gosh, 100% agree. Like <laughs> you need to choose for you, for you and what resonates for you. I think also there can be like, too much of a good thing. There are too many places for input now with Pinterest and Instagram and all these places. You can start to kind of get confused between the subtle differences. Like there's a pretty big difference between dark and moody and light and airy. Like on a spectrum, we can kind of tell those two things apart. Right. But within that, once you start looking at people, it can get almost confusing because you're just looking at so many points of inspiration and so many different photos. Um, but looking at mood in images, yeah, Keith, I think is super important. Are, is, are people generally laughing and smiling um, or are people crying? Are people kind of doing right. that like sexy, like, I don't know, I'm not good at it. The like, mm, the duck face. Mm, uh. Yeah. Like, you know, or like looking away <laughs> from each other, like popping a, you know, hand on a hip and like looking away from each other and kind of being like fierce. Right. Or are they like romantic and, you know, falling into each other and smiling and whatever. So, um, you know, those things will come across not just in the editing style, but in like the, in the emotions that people right. choose to show online as well. And yeah. Um, and not letting your friends do that. I actually had a, a bride who was ready to book me and then talk to her friends and they were like, they said you're more um, Pinterest 
<laughs> and I should go for someone more Instagram. And I was like, I don't even know what that means. What does that I, mean? I, I don't know. It was very confusing, but she ended up going with someone else. And I don't know that it was actually the style she wanted because so we had weird. a good connection and she loved my work. So I don't That's know what that so means. That's so weird. Yeah. Well, and so <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Kalani uh, just piped in. He said, a great way of picking a good photographer and knowing that you have a good photographer is an engagement session. I That's smart. Absolutely. I, Very right? smart. I feel like that's a great point because you, you get an idea. Personality. Right. Yep. You get an idea of their personality and you haven't made that huge investment yet. And it's kind of a warm up, right? I want to like go a, back, Keith. Like I want to go back to what you said about yeah. doing, you know, we talked about doing you. And I think so many couples these days, especially of a certain age, see their what their friends are doing and they're trying to do the exact same thing. Emulate. Yep. Exactly. How do you encourage? I mean, like, what do you do as a photographer? You know, like yeah. they say, oh, yeah, so and so had this, you know, can you take a picture like this? Because my friend had this picture taken at her wedding. How oh, do you get them out of crazy. How do you get them out of that, that rut of being like, you know, just another number, as opposed to this is their wedding? Yeah, yeah, because I mean, you're uh, uh, being the photographer, obviously, you're trying to win the business, but you also don't want to lead them down the wrong path. I mean, where where does that balance? Do you just say, look, I got to be truthful to to them. And, you know, if they choose to book me, then so be it. And if not, there's other business down the road. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a balance. And I, what, even more than like the friends thing, all that I have seen that is again, coming back to Pinterest is like, can you recreate these like, 10 to like 50 shots on Pinterest that I saw, um, which is just so it's a, it's a blessing and a curse with Pinterest because you get some great ideas and some great inspiration and you can figure out your style, but, and same thing from your friend's weddings with like, they're all going to like eight, you know, weddings in a year and then it's your turn. And how do you actually oh, stand out worst. from that? Right. Yeah. Um, for, for, I think different photographers handle it differently, but most of us would prefer that you trust us to capture the day and that you hire us for the creative vision and eye that we bring to the day. Yeah. And if we have a shot list of, you know, 50 to 150 shots, which I've actually seen like places put out, you know, get all these shots in the day. And it's literally like 200 things that start with like your mom zipping your dress for getting ready. Well, like, of course I'm going to get that shot. Like, <laughs> Just, if I'm there for it, like, like, I'm not gonna, like, <laughs> ignore it. like that's not important. Like, of course we're going to get that shot. Right. Um, but once, if you start with like getting that extensive or trying to recreate a lot, you're really stifling your photographer and not showing trust in them to capture the day that you're having. And then you are both going to end up missing opportunities for candid moments and to be fully present in your day. And, and is to this be the goal present. to be present yes. in your day, to like focus on your soulmate, to focus on your loved ones, to party with your friends? Like, isn't that what it's ultimately about? What do you and oh, trusting sorry, your photographer to capture those moments that yeah. genuinely happen as opposed to like recreating, which never works because the light's different. You're in a different part of the country. Yeah. <laughs> you want you get you have desert inspiration and we live in New England. Like just <laughs> don't do it. It doesn't work. <laughs> so I this is a big question, and I'm totally putting you on the spot on this one. First look first look or no first look? whatever oh, works for oh. you i honestly oh. i'm a huge believer in whatever works for you with a few exceptions okay one being i really value doing portraits in natural light and if yep. you picked me chances are you picked me because you saw natural light sunlight daylight images on my feed on my website yep. so if your church ceremony or your you know your venue ceremony starts at like six o'clock and the sun sets at five we're going to have to talk about the fact that you need to do a first look or your photos won't look like the rest of my gal, like the things you're seeing online. Oh, that's interesting. And you could be disappointed from that, but I can't make daylight once it's gone. Right. So that's uh, a place where we, we need you. to talk about it. Yep. Um, and the other place would be in making sure you have the time you need for the photos you want. So I don't care necessarily personally when that happens. I have, I would say probably 50-50 for couples who choose to do a first look and couples who choose to do a ceremony reveal. Right. I love both. I'm fine with both. But we need to make sure you have the time you need for the photos you want. And an hour in cocktail hour without a first look is generally not enough time. Because that means family, yeah. wedding party, 
and couples portraits in an hour, unless you're doing an extended cocktail or you have a gap between a ceremony and your reception, or you do some of the separate stuff ahead of time. So like there are lots of ways to work it out. Right. But we need to have that conversation to figure that out. But I don't have, I know some people are like die hard first look, you have to do it. It's the only yeah. way to go. Yep. What do you value as a couple? I want to help you achieve what you value as a couple. So that's what think, we're going to do. But I think that's important to have that, that honest conversation yeah. about timing with whatever event pros you have. And, you know, if you have a day of person or if you don't, if you're working with a hotel, you got to have that conversation about what is the timing really going to be like and not in best case scenario and on a perfect day, you got to talk about the worst day, like worst day. Like if all else fails, I know that this timing is going to work. Yep. You, you know, put cushions in. Yes. You got to put cushions in and you need to have that realistic conversation with, with your couples. And, and I find that photographers tend to, to either be all about the joy, love, and oh, it's a perfect day. Look at the butterflies flying, et cetera. Ooh. Or they're all hardcore about their artistry. Finding somebody that can balance both is, is fairly difficult. I find, I, I don't know, Marcy, what do you think? I, I, what, have you had that kind of idea? Um, I think that, you know, I mean, as far as showing, you know, doing like a first look, like you're saying, Lynn, I think that it does depend on the couple. I mean, I know from my own wedding, I wanted to do it beforehand. I wanted to get those butterflies away. I wanted to focus on the day. Um, but it really is about the couple. I think that one thing that that you as a couple need to do is sit down and go through that long list. Uh, you know, everybody's family is different. So their dynamics are going to be different when you go from one family to the next. And right. you've got to figure out what are the most essential pictures you want to take because you, you know, like you said before, Lynn, that list could be like 200 pictures alone. <laughs> And nobody wants a list. Nobody wants to hand that list over to a photographer. You know, so you got to go in with what is your absolute? What do mm. I have to have? Yeah. Um, what's your feeling on that, Lynn? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I mean, so the place where I, I actually don't ask for a shot list beyond family portraits. Really? So I, I don't. I ask, what are there? Are there any important traditions or sentimental things that are going to be happening that you want to make sure I'm aware of? That's a right. question on the questionnaire I send out about three nice. months before. But the only specific shots I ask for are for family portraits. And then, like, you know, do you have that like college photo that you want to make sure we get, you know, with all the friends or something like that? But um, listing out those family photos beyond that. I don't actually even put the question out there because the assumption should be that you trust me to document the important things and we're going to be in commu close communication, planning together. I'm going to be asking a lot of questions. We do a six month checking call. Um, so I think that's one of the things my couples trust that I know what's coming in their wedding day. I know what's important to them because I've taken the time over the course of our relationship in preparing together. Mm -hmm. to know what they value so that and, I'm, I'm going to show up and capture it. Yeah. And family it is, dynamic was what I was referring to. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, and it is a relationship. I mean, I think that that's one of the things that when you're hiring your vendors, you got to understand that you are going to be in a relationship for six months, a year. Well, thanks to the pandemic, some two, two and a half years. Um, yep. It's a long time, to, <laughs> long time to be in a relationship, but uh, so how do you handle a bride that doesn't like how she looks in a photo? Because I actually had this happen. Oh God, it's gotta be eight years now, nine years where the bride was like wrapped up like a sausage. She should have never been wearing the dress that she was wearing FYI. And I told her that because I'm always honest with, with my clients and her response is, Oh, the photographer can edit that out and make me look amazing. Ooh, and I, I cringe. I cringe. And I'm like, well, first of all, you already look amazing because you're a bride and everybody, yeah. I feel like every bride is beautiful, but I don't feel like every bride is realistic about what the possibilities are as far as editing, you know, where they go to a, a hairdresser and then they don't like the way their hair turned out or their makeup turned right. out. So they wind up redoing it. Yeah. And then of course, or they, or they say, oh, well, can you thin me out? Can you elongate my face? You know, there's, there's only so much you can do 
when you're yeah. editing 800 photos. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, with that number like that, it is a big number and it just limits kind of the editing that photographers are generally willing to do because it is a time consuming endeavor to yeah. do those kinds of like highly detailed edits and almost transformations. And a lot of photographers that do weddings are not necessarily like Photoshop pros that are going to be able to do that because they're capturing real life moments. And that's right. kind of what they're all about. They're not about creating, you know, art out of those images that's, that didn't exist there. Right. Like we're not going to put sun into your rainy wedding day. Right. For example, like that's just not happening. If that light wasn't there, you're just not there. It's just um, not there. Yeah. So or their depth face didn't look well. <laughs> yeah. And so but, it it is, it's something that like people say offhand all the time. Oh, you can just Photoshop that out. Right. And it's like, well, maybe technically yeah. yes, but yeah. you may end up having to pay for it. Uh, if it's like in more than just a handful of images. Right. Um, what I, I will say, like, photographers are delivering final images. It's not like we're just giving, we're taking photos and dumping them, you know, onto the computer and calling it done. Like all the images that you get from a professional photographer are going to be edited. They're going to be color corrected, cropped. Um, they're going to be made to look their best, straightened, all those things. But those detailed edits um, are not necessarily going to happen on every single photo or like taking out like a distraction in the background. Right. Um, for some of those portraits or really up close shots of the bride and groom, things like that, um, or yeah. the couple, um, if there is, you know, an obvious blemish in a really tight portrait, I'm going to take that out. And I think a lot of photographers would, but that's going to be on a limited number of images. Um, and what you'll more likely see is that photographers will ask, you know, which ones are you intending to print, put on your wall? put in your album, I'm, I'll do a little more high touch editing for a handful of them, but it's not reasonable to expect that you didn't like something on your dress and it's going to be changed in every image of your dress. If right. you're the bride, you're going to be in what 600 out of the 900 photos you get from the day or whatever it is. Like you can't expect that to happen for that many images. Um, it, well, and I know that. And so Jeff, just thank you, Jeff, for the, the term retouch, you know, yeah, yeah. I feel like, I feel like, uh, couples are almost dependent on the idea of retouch because they think, Oh, it's okay. They can, they can retouch this. And, and my answer is no, we need to have that conversation ahead of time because you can't just retouch all the photos. It, you, right. There has to be some realism that happens in your, in, in the day of. And so I'm going to go back to the editing to elongate somebody's face or squeeze them in. I mean, how do you get, uh, somebody to a point do you because I think Jeff came came up with the the good idea the engagement sh shot I love that idea because then at least they have a realistic visual of what their photos are going to look like if somebody hires you but the engagement shoot is not part of it but you see a little red flag come up do you suggest an engagement shoot as a as a let me prep them before we get to the day of just to reduce any possibility of issues? Absolutely. Yeah. It's definitely something I suggest for couples, even if they are not like, well, well, we don't really need those photos. It's such a great opportunity, like Jeff was saying, to get to know your photographer, to feel comfortable in front of the camera. A lot of people don't spend a lot of time posing in front of, you know, a professional photographer with professional camera. You get to know like the posing and kind of the flow and personalities. Um, and then, yeah, seeing yourself. So I think it's a great idea to do that and would always try to recommend it um, and bring it back up if you do see those red flags or like people having those questions. Yeah. But I'm, I, you also, I think, need to just be honest. And photographers, it's tricky because you don't want to... Um, Scare them off. Be, yeah, you don't want to scare them off or things like that. And you always want to be able to say like, yes, when people have questions and can you do stuff. But the truth is you need, like clear is kind. Brene Brown always says, I love her. Is kind, unclear is unkind. Let's be clear. Oh, I start. like that. Let's be clear from the start about what level of editing I do, what kind of retouching I'll do for you, what might cost extra, and just, you know, setting those expectations and asking the question. So sometimes you'll have um, like a bride who will say, I hate my arms. So I really want to make sure that like you're 
helping me pose to like not emphasize that part of my body. I have right? heard that a million times. I hate yeah. my arms. I don't understand that yeah. at all because I'm like, you have beautiful arms. What are you talking about? You know, so I get that. Yeah. So, well, if I know that ahead of time, I can actually really help you like to mitigate that in your images. And I'm going to take fewer images from maybe a side view where you're like, you know, all crunched in together and it's like making your arms not look as great as you want them to. Right. There are lots of things I can do, but if I need to know it ahead of time. So again, it does become a thing about comfortability and communication with your photographer. Um, if you're, if you have one of those concerns, bring it up with your photographer and, and maybe do that as one of the questions you ask from the start. Yep. Just so that they're aware and see like maybe the question I don't think should be, can you edit this after? I think the question is, how would you help me pose to feel more confident in this way? And see if they have mm. some tips for how to do it because the nice. you want to do it on the front end, not the back end. Smart. That's so smart. I can't even believe it's already been 50 minutes. So Len, I, will you stick with us uh, at, when we come back from commercial for Absolutely. After the Veil? I'd love to. Oh my God, this has been so informative. I can't even believe like the time flew by, but all right. So we're gonna hear a quick, uh, a quick note from Atlas, one of our sponsors, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. Hi, I'm Heather Rufe, managing partner of Atlas Event Rental. What sets Atlas apart from other rental companies, I always say is our service and quality. My motto is we never say no. If you have a party and there's a certain linen and your party's in two days and we ran out of fabric, if I could get it shipped in, I will get it shipped in. We check the weather. If we see it's gonna rain and you're using an outdoor dance floor, we're gonna call you ahead of time. We go above and beyond. We love being a part of all of your events, so come party with Atlas. Oh my God, that was quick. Oh, done. Uh, so, so this is the part where we, we get to we get to brag on each other a little bit, and I want you to, because I know you now are speaking. I mean. Yeah. That had to be kind of a jump because here you go from behind the camera. I feel like you were protected a little bit because you're you're hiding. Oh, it's much more comfortable back there. Absolutely. And <laughs> now you're on stage talking to other people about like a wide variety of subjects, I'm assuming. But yeah. so how does that feel? to be on the other side of it. Like, did yeah. you just naturally go, yeah, I'm good with this. I'm uh, I'm a good speaker, you know? Oh my gosh, no. Or, or was um, it like <laughs> teeth pulling, you know? Yeah, no, I was, it was one of those things where I, I'm a like Enneagram three achiever. And for me, it was like, I have to, I should be able to do this. This is like the next, like, you know, thing challenge I want to conquer. Right. Um, but also I, it helps me a lot to think about it like teaching versus speaking when you oh. use the term speaking and I'm like, uh, I'm up there and I have to like talk to an audience. That's like really scary and makes my palms sweaty and I can't handle it. But if <laughs> you want me to like teach a crowd of 600 people a thing, yeah, whatever that is, if I could be like a teacher and put on my teacher voice and do that thing, that's yeah. way more comfortable. So I try to kind of like trick myself into it by thinking about it like that. Um, you, and I've been easing into it more with like, you know, um, virtual stuff because of, of, of COVID and everything. So I right. haven't been physically on a stage in a little while. Yeah. Do you like having your picture taken? Um, not a ton, actually. I don't know a lot of photographers who do. I, think I know. That's why I wanted to ask that question. It's crazy. Yeah, no. I, like, um, I love taking photos with my husband. We do, I make do portraits <laughs> with me every year. We do an annual portrait session because um, yeah. I'm a firm believer in like having those updated photos. You don't just want them from your wedding. I think you should have them from right. your life, you know, year right. to year. So we do Christmas photos every year or, you know, a holiday picture or something. Um, and those are fun because it's, it's just like doing an engagement shoot or like the wedding, you know, couples portraits on your wedding day. Like you get to right. snuggle together and focus on him and like, he's funny. He makes me comfortable. I love him. So like that makes it easier. That's kind of, uh, it's kind of good that you love your husband. Yeah, I know. I know right? <laughs> <Important details. laughs> well, because uh, even on your, on your website, I love the fact that you said that you're part of your own love story. And yeah. I was like, Oh, I love that. It's like, I, it's like, I totally get where you're coming from because I'm in love with my husband. You know, it's like, it's such right? a nice way to kind of bring people into your life a little bit and, and go, I get it. I get why you're in love because I'm also in love. I love that. That's yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, our, our, we started dating in college, so we're college sweethearts. So I always wow. love hearing from other college sweethearts. I actually have a lot of high school and college sweethearts who, um, 
become my couples, which is kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like those points of connection, I think, that you get to put out there for couples that attract them to you. Like, and our love story is such an important part of my life. Like we we chose years ago not to have ch children. We love kids. Yep. We love being aunts and uncle. <laughs> we're just, we're not having our own. Um, I get it. So it's just the two of us, you know, and how do you, you, st you have to work hard at a marriage. And so that's real, but we really do. And we enjoy working at it and having date nights and I don't know, doing all those things. So. Well, I say to people all the time, I love being a dink, dual income, no kids, you know, <laughs> I'm like, that's the best part. It's like, I, because Same I here. have a God, right? I have a goddaughter. Okay. You need a little money because you just moved to Chicago. Okay. Here, fine. It's not every day, right? It's right? like, oh my God, I don't have to buy you shoes and feed right. you and all that. Oh my college. God. <laughs> yeah, oh, you can get like God. the nephews. We have four nephews. You can get them all wound up, get them all yeah. excited. You're going to be the fun aunt and uncle. And you're like, okay, bye. Bye. Yeah. Here's I some candy I've to take home. My whole life, just one. <laughs> yeah, here's a bag of candy. Sad that I even did it. Yeah, exactly. Here's here all the all the sweet uh, things. Like it'll be great. Yeah. Well, what do you do? You have do you feel like because you're a photographer? Do you feel like your family tries to take advantage of it and say, you know, we really we'd like to do a family portrait. Can you do our family photos, or do you try to keep it pro professional? Like, oh my gosh, you, yeah, that can be tricky. Um, yeah. Well, when I first started, I was like, can I please take your picture? Right. Cause right. Like, who do I know? So right. um, they were really gracious about that. So I feel like if they want photos now and I can actually, they may actually, you know, want my photos now because <laughs> I'm a little <laughs> bit better than I was back then. Uh, it's you know, true. You know, I, but I don't mind doing that for them. They're, they're actually pretty good. My mom is like my number one fan. She, she used to come oh, when I, love I that. did, um, when I was doing like the bridal shows, you know, Yes. And you'd set up at like a wedding <laughs> yeah. show and you'd have the thing. Like my mom would come and like be my my other my wingman at those. And oh, that's oh, wonderful. Oh, so I love just, that. She was great. So she's like a huge, huge supporter in that sense. And she's um purchased mini sessions from me before. I mean, she's just <laughs> been wonderful um but yeah so no they, my family's pretty good although every christmas i'm directing like a 40 person full oh photo. yeah i was about to uh, say so that always lands oh, on me yeah, and it's with like dinner. a cell phone too because like i you know it's just take it <laughs> on like my dad's <laughs> cell phone whatever um like, like i do not stand by the quality of this image but i can get you all into the photo we can do that well <laughs> it does it does drive me a little crazy that you know because cell phones have come such a long way and the photos that you get on a cell phone are so much better than they used to be mm -hmm. but they're not the same Oh my God, I cannot tell you how many conversations I've had. They're like, oh, we'll just give uh, all of our friends and family to take photos. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, don't. <laughs> just, just like I will tell people not to hire a friend or a family member for anything because the, the lines are blurred. You yep. need to have a pro. You need to hire a pro. Don't you know, this is the one area you really can't skimp on. The yeah. same thing, right? Same thing comes with like, oh, we'll just get photos from everybody's cell phones. Like, no, you need somebody that is focused on you. You know, oh, you need to have yeah. your yeah. advocate for I the day. Know, like low light situations, like thinking about right. those like beautifully exactly. lit ceremonies and receptions, all you get are these like blurry, grainy things. It drives me crazy. I always want try to turn around previews for my couples within 48 hours. Oh, wow. Because really? otherwise, you know, Aunt Sue sends them the blurriest picture of them walking down the aisle. And that's yep. the one they share because it was the first one they got. And I'm like, no, no, no. Just give me 48 hours and I will give you beautiful images to share. I promise. You're <laughs> like, please do not. Because I don't want anybody thinking that that was my well, photo. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you wouldn't. But it's just like I, you have a professional photographer. I promise you can have there will be better photos to share than the blurry, grainy, you know, one that was from a cell phone. Don't do it. Yeah. Well, I always okay. recommend oh, to people to also bring their, you know, bring the photographer their invitation. I thought you were say bring your volume. <laughs> or, you know, bring, you know, bring your shoes. Have those special things available for the photographer to take pictures while you're getting ready. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Detail it's shots. Actually something, and so this is again, I think, like one of those things that you can talk to your photographer about ahead of time and it could be a great question to ask. Like, do you take those photos even? Do you mm -hmm. think, do you do flat lays? Um, is that what it's what called? You would call flat that, lays? like styling oh, that, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, flat lays. And they're um, not easy. <laughs> they're not. They take a lot longer to style than it takes to take the photo. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, I actually build in about 45 minutes 
to just style flat lays at the start of yeah. like the invitation, the shoes, the jewelry, those pieces, because they look effortless, I hope, but right. they are not effortless to create. So, and I, I come feel- with like a little kit and everything. I bring out like the ribbon and the trinket dishes and all. The oh, things, no, so. you don't. Oh, I, I love do. it. Yeah. Yep. That's a good photographer. Well, you know, it takes a special, it takes a, per, a special personality to be able to get people to tell people what they need to be doing without coming across as a bitch. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that takes a very special personality to be able to control people in a way that they understand that you're doing it because you want to make sure that they get all the best photos and not because right. you want to tell people where to go, you right. know? Right. I mean, because I'm, that's I, something that you want down the road. I mean, you, you yeah. get one shot at your wedding and you yeah. want those moments to be captured. I mean, you yeah, got so it. Those pieces yeah. tell the, the story of your day. They help round exactly. out your story. And yeah. So I think it just comes down to educating, right? To cut for your couples. Like, why do these, why should these matter? Or why do these matter to them? Not to me. Exactly. Right? Why exactly. do they matter to them for their memories, their day? Um, and and then how do we make sure that those get, you know, documented as beautifully, beautifully as possible? Um, yeah. But it's an so, education kind of platform, I think, that you need to come exactly. by. Not like, you need to do this for me because I know. Totally for them. I mean, things, that's the bottom line. Right? Is that- and I need all the, like, red M&Ms in a bowl separately. Like, I oh don't my God. It's, not, it's not like that. It's like, why do why does it matter to them? Yeah. Oh my God. So we're, we're running a little over, but I have to ask you this question because it just popped in my head. I, and what do you do with, so you're there, you're focused on the couple and inevitably there'll be a, somebody that is a guest of the wedding that will have, take the opportunity because now there's a professional photographer and be like, can you just, will you take some photos of us? I mean, uh, uh, right. Not family members, guests. Right. How do you, how do you, and, and obviously you're being, you're running because you got to get all these photos. How do you politely say, I'm so sorry, but I need to focus on the couple. Oh my gosh. It happens. It happens almost every wedding where you'll have somebody be like, Oh, can you take a picture of us? Uh, Usually my answer is either yes. Or my second photographer can do that for you. Let me send them over to you right now. Uh, because I'm in the middle of, you know, doing X, Y, Z with the couple. Right. Um, That's I think one of the many benefits we didn't even talk about, like, one photographer versus two, but I always have a second photographer with me for events over 50 people. You got to. That's one of a million reasons why. Uh, Because you do, you know, if you think about it, it can feel like um, you're getting distracted or pulled away from something that might be more important, but those people are there as guests of your couple. Right. And so they're going to appreciate a great photo of that family or that couple as well. Right. So like, documenting those is always a nice thing to do to always say yes to but it's also great to be able to be like yep my second photographer can help you with that i'm in the middle of x right so having that second photographer come along is great I, I, um, or it's just like in a minute or come see me at cocktail hour like now is not a great time because we only have 10 minutes of daylight left or you know yep. whatever it is but um i never i pretty much never say no it'll always be like yes and or like let's do this later well, and that's always a really hard thing because it's amazing how uh, how reactive guests can be when you say, I need to really go run over here, but I'll be right back. And they're like, yeah, but we really want the sunset. I'm like, well, so does a couple. <laughs> right, right. You know, so, so does the bride and groom. So does the people who hired me. <laughs> yeah, because right. they hired me. And, you know, but I think I think having a second photographer, I feel like over 50 people is an absolute necessity. I know that a lot of couples try to, you know, that's an area that they try to save money. And I, I usually say don't. For, for the small amount of money that it's, the difference between a, a one photographer and two photographers is fairly minimal compared to the overall price. Right, right. Like spend the money. You will so yeah. be happy that you have somebody else that can take, that can take those couples photos right. that can take photos of, of the ballroom before everybody just destroys it. You know, I mean, and it's a cocktail hour, you know, guest yeah. reactions during toast. I, that's one of my favorite things to kind of capture all the guests, right? Because they're laughing, they're engaged. It's they're truly present in those moments and you get like great reactions and smiles and laughter. Yes. But if you're trying to just cover like the person giving the speech and the couple, it's really hard to then also get 
guest reactions, but a second photographer is going to help really round that out and capture so many more people than you could do by yourself. Oh my God, Lynn. I, I mean, we definitely ran over, but I just want to say thank you. Oh my God. It was such a great conversation. And I feel like we just like literally got the tip of the iceberg because there's just so totally. much more to talk about. I know. Thanks for having me. It was great. With Oh my God, we had such a good time and, and hopefully at, at some point we can have you back on Behind the Veil to talk more about photography. Would love to. Well, and then also to actually get, probably get your insight on the business side of it because, you know, obviously being a, a pro speaker now on the circuit, so to speak. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what? That's like, what? How is no that even possible? <laughs> oh, man, thank you again for being Land, on, on Behind the Veil. And uh, so we're here every Tuesday at 2 o'clock. But for now, everybody say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.